However, I, mired in endless pain, have matured and become much more than a man. Yes, I've grown from a man to a god. Pain is easily my favorite villain in all of Naruto and one of the best villains of all time. I can say that confidently because he meets my criteria for what makes a well-written villain. In this video, I'm going to go over what makes Pain such an interesting villain by breaking down his cycle of hatred speech. Before I get to the breakdown of the speech, it's important that I give some background info into Pain's past so you can get a more clear idea of how he came to his current philosophy. Pain, or Nagato, lived with his parents on the outskirts of the Hidden Rain Village. When he was young, Madara secretly transplanted his Renegon into Nagato. Side note, I still think it's funny how Naruto normalized popping in new eyeballs like rappers pop perks. During the Second Shinobi World War, Nagato and his family took shelter in their home to avoid the fighting. One day, two Konoha Shinobi broke into their home looking for food. When Nagato and his parents tried to sneak out, they were discovered. His parents, in an attempt to create an opening for him to escape, attacked the Shinobi but were killed. This caused Nagato to activate the Renegon Madara gave him for the first time. Nagato later banded together with two more orphans, Conan and Yahiko. They bonded over dreams of using their power to end all wars in the future. Jiraiya, feeling guilty for participating in the war that put them in their current situations, agreed to train them. While the trio was out one day, a hidden stone village Chunin assaulted them. And fearing for him and his friends' lives, Nagato used the Renegon to kill the stone ninja. Jiraiya saw that Nagato felt remorse for killing the stone ninja, so he convinced them that- Nagato. I don't know. I can't really say whether what you did was right or was wrong. But thanks to your actions, Yahiko is still alive now. You saved your friend's life. I believe that's always the right thing to do. No one can fault you for helping a friend. Once you've been hurt, you learn what it is to hate. But if you hurt another, you become hated and you shoulder a sense of guilt. This is a pivotal part of his backstory and his overarching view of the way the world works. However, the death of Yahiko is what ultimately solidified his philosophy, which he perfectly explains in his speech to Naruto. My goal is to fulfill the dream even Jiraiya Sensei was unable to achieve. As I said earlier, what I want is to create peace and bring about justice. Stopping right here, we see one of the main reasons as to why Pain is a well-written villain. There is a method to his madness. He's not just evil for the sake of being evil. In his mind, he's actually the hero. His goal is to bring peace and justice into the world. However, due to his past, his approach is skewed. A good villain must have a goal that is not only emotionally charged, but also believable. Pretty much everyone can relate to Pain's motivations for his actions. The harder part is deciding whether his methods are morally justified. Oh, I see. That is noble of you. That would be justice. However, what about my family? My friends. My village. They suffer the same fate as this village at the hands of you hidden leaf ninja. How is it fair to let only you people preach about peace and justice? This is another great line by Pain. It's not often you see villains challenge the morality of the hero and actually leave them conflicted. A great villain puts the protagonist in a position to question their idea of justice and morality and grow from whatever situation they're put through. This is why the Joker, for example, is such a great villain in The Dark Knight. He is constantly putting Batman in positions that force him to question his own moral code and whether he should stick to it. Pain is explaining to Naruto how killing him will only keep the cycle of hatred and pain continuing on and on, transferring from person into person. Once, the land of fire and the hidden leaf had grown too big. To protect their national interests, they forced feudal clans to wage war against each other, then profited from it. Otherwise, the people of the villages would have starved. As it happened, our little nation and its villages became the battlefield where the great nations waged their war. Each time they did, our nation was ravaged and laid to waste. After many such battles, the great nation stabilized, but our smaller nation suffered, and it barely recovered. You and I are both seeking the very same thing. We both want to achieve the peace that Jiraiya Sensei envisioned. You and I are the same. We're both motivated by our desire for peace and justice. The justice that I have delivered against the Leaf Village is no different from what you are trying to do to me. 
Everyone feels the same pain when losing something dear. You and I have both experienced that pain. You strive for your justice, and I strive for mine. We're both just ordinary men who have been driven to seek vengeance in the name of justice. And if one comes to call vengeance justice, such justice will only breed further vengeance and trigger a vicious cycle of hatred. Right now we live in such a cycle. I know the past and can foretell our future. It is the same as our history. So we believe that human beings simply cannot understand each other, and they never will. The shinobi world of ours is ruled by hatred, and hatred alone. In the final part of the speech, Pain speaks about how the wars between the great nations left his village destroyed multiple times. A major theme in this section of the speech is the idea of selfish justice. By this, I mean the idea that people fight for what they believe is justice, and they don't even consider the viewpoints of others, or how the achievement of their so-called justice can affect others. The clans who fought in the Great Shinobi Wars all fought for what they believed to be justice. However, that same fight for justice breeds pain and hatred from the other side. He also emphasizes the common connection between vengeance and justice, criticizing the fact that the only way people see fit to bring justice is to eliminate evil. But this in turn just passes the hatred from person to person or group to group. This can even be seen in real life. War is seen as the only way to end a conflict, but after every war, a new one begins not too long after. The cycle is also a reason for a lot of the violence in inner city communities in America. You killed my brother, so now I have to get back, and the cycle continues. Payne ends it by saying human beings cannot understand each other and they never will. And with that being said, I pose the question Can true world peace ever be achieved? And if so, how do we break the cycle of hatred? 